Hi, this is a screencast in which I'm going to talk about how to set up a, a nicely formatted spreadsheet to handle gate analysis data. I'm going to illustrate it with a particular spreadsheet that you can download from my blog site. It's one that's been created to uh, make it easy to display the gate profile score and the movement analysis profile. Uh, so you can go to this page, you click on the blue link here, and then you can open up the spreadsheet in Excel. Uh, one of the reasons I want to do this screencast is because I have a lot of students who make really complicated screencasts and what I really want to focus on is how you can most effectively use spreadsheets when you keep them as simple as possible. A uh, little bit of thought about how to structure the data before you start can save a great deal of confusion later on. The approach works well when gate, using gate analysis data as I'll be illustrating here but it can equally work for Data, uh, any data that's uh, captured from multiple occasions or on multiple subjects. <clears throat> the spreadsheet we're looking at is a modified version of one that was originally produced by Mike Schwartz to support people in uh, calculating the gate deviation index. He lodged it uh, on the Elsevier gate and posture website as an electronic appendix to his original article. Uh, and I have developed it. It still calculates the GDI, but it will now calculate the um, movement analysis profile and the GOAT profile score as well. So let's look at the layout first of all. And of course, any spreadsheet is broken down into a number of different worksheets, which are listed on the tabs across the bottom. For any spreadsheet I've got that I want other people to use, I try and put an instruction sheet on one of those worksheets. Uh, and it makes sense to make this the, the one over to the left-hand side where people will first look. The other top tip is to remember that the view that you get of the spreadsheet um, is the same one that the spreadsheet was showing when you last saved the document. So if you want the instructions to be uh, to, if you want the spreadsheet to open up with the instructions on, on top, all you've got to do is save it in that fashion. Now the other worksheets are of course the ones that contain the data and the processing. Um, you'll notice the first thing is that I've changed the names so that they've got something that indicates what sort of uh, data is on them. I also think it's important to have some sort of logical flow through the uh, spreadsheet. So what happens is basically the uh, the worksheets on the right hand side are the ones that have got the raw data in and as we go through stages of processing we move towards the left of the, uh, uh, the, the, the tab bar at the bottom here. So let me illustrate this with a subset of data that's got the subject measurements. Subject kinematics includes, as you might expect, all the raw kinematic data as exported from your gate analysis system. The next tab along is the uh, processing of each of those data sets on a, on a data set by data set basis. Uh, there's then some graphical output that's uh, useful for quality assurance purposes. And finally we have the, uh, the tab that's got uh, another stage of processing where data from the different data sets is collated and then uh, an actual output of that data in the format of the movement analysis profile. So let's look at how we're storing the data actually within the worksheets. And you'll see that the secret here is to store the data in, in columns. Um, so all the data relating from subject one is, is stored in this column here. And you can see over on the left hand side, I'm telling you which gate variable it is we're looking at the moment then, and we've got the percentage of the gate cycle here. And if I scroll through this, you'll see that we go through the different um, times of the gate cycle, the different gate variables, and I'll list the data for the left side first in red, and then about here we turn to the data that's uh, coming from the right side as well. Um, you'll actually find if you scroll across this that there's, uh, there's room for 250 data sets that we can accommodate on these spreadsheets. I've labeled them as subject one, subject two, subject three, but of course it could equally be uh, a number of different trials from the same subject or from a, a mix of trials from a mix of subjects. The important thing is that all the data from a particular stride that you're looking at is in a single column. 
Um, it's a little bit of personal preference whether you actually choose to store data in, in, in columns or rows. Um, it's my feeling that it's, it's, it's easier to scroll down through data. Um, and the other little thing is that in, in earlier versions of Excel, there was a, 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 a shorter limitation on the number of columns that was actually possible to put in a, a spreadsheet than the number of rows. And of course, in data analysis, we can have some fairly long uh, uh, data sets. You'll also see that uh, to the left-hand side here, I've got some summary statistics. So the, the average value here is the average across all the subjects that are uh, present in, in the data. And the next column across is a standard deviation for those same subjects. So we get some summary statistics down the left-hand side. And if you want to calculate those summary statistics accurately, it's important that you leave the, uh, uh, the subjects you haven't got data for, you leave those columns blank. Um, if you put zeros into there, those zeros would be uh, uh, incorporated in the calculations for the averages and standard deviations, and of course you'll quite simply get the, the wrong results. So that's uh, where we choose to put the raw data. Um, it can be a little bit of a challenge getting data out of a gate analysis system and into a single column of a, an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I think at some stage in the future I'll come up with a little screencast that gives you some tips on how to do that, but that's for a later date. Um, what I would say is that getting it into this column uh, format um, really makes things hugely uh, easier um, to do later on, and I'd, I'd really recommend that this is the, uh, the way you do things. Because if we go to the next tab, which got the process data, you'll see I've got uh, exactly the same layout. I've got the, the variables I'm, I'm, I'm creating down the left-hand side. I've got the averages and standard deviations. And because some of this data isn't uh, normally distributed, I've also calculated median values. And then I've got the same 250 columns with uh, all the process data from each of the different individuals. And you'll see here that we've calculated the gate deviation index for the left side and the right side. Um, and some of the processing is done on some, uh, some of the rows lower down that you can see. I don't really want to go into what's happening. What I do want you to see that we've basically got exactly the same uh, column structure for the uh, process data here as we had for the original data. And that means that if we, uh, once we check that these, uh, these data are right, we can just drag these columns across and we can extend the analysis for as many uh, subjects as we want, or indeed for as many data sets as we want. Notice that I use a slightly complex way for entering the data here. Um, using an if statement that basically says if there's any uh, if the if the underlying column on the of the raw data is blank then uh, put a blank value in this spreadsheet and only if there's actually real data in the underlying um, uh, raw data worksheet will it actually put a value here and of course we do that in order that the averages and standard deviations that are calculated by Excel are accurate So when I've done all the analysis that's possible to do on a data set by data set uh, basis, I then move to the, the final tab. And you'll see that over on the right hand side here, I've got the bit of the analysis that pulls the data across from the uh, and summarizes across all the data sets and puts it in a format that allows us to generate the outcome, which of course is the movement analysis profile. So that's it really. The take home message is put your data in columns on one worksheet. Perform the analysis that's got to be repeated for each data set in another worksheet with exactly the same column structure. Put any analysis that summarizes the data from different data sets into a further worksheet and then give specific tables and graphical output either on that worksheet or on a specific one for it. Give each worksheet a sensible name and arrange them in a logical order. And finally, save the spreadsheet uh, with the worksheet on top that you want people to see when they first open up the worksheet in future.